lot of news around Bitcoin and Ethereum today, all coming from Hong Kong. We'll break it down for you guys today. I'll also give you some insights to a ton of tokens on our chart analysis. So you don't want to miss all that. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Let's get started. I do want to thank our sponsor, and that is Tangem. If you're looking at self custody and you want to do it with a hardware wallet, well, there's a couple of ways you can go, and it's Tangem. Tangem.com. Check it out. It's a great tool that really gives you a solution that is pretty elegant in the sense that I like the cards, very secure, and also works great with their app. And it's uh, one doing in, you know, in app swaps, you've got a lot of security there. And of course, you can all do that for self custody, getting your tokens off the exchanges and over in your own hands. So all you have to do is click that little green button right there. It's going to take you to the three card set, buy that, use our link, and that'll give you a little uh, discount to get going. All right, so Bitcoin, of course, moving up the charts, but we are seeing a little bit of adjustment right now in the markets. And if you kind of look at where the current uh, market cap is right now, Bitcoin, if you look on the seven day, a little bit of sideways, uh, we'll break that down, get into it today. But what is causing and could cause some big movements is this right here. Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs could launch in Hong Kong before the halving. This, of course, maybe could be going live as early as Monday, the 15th. Uh, so some very interesting uh, points here, I think. Anticipated approvals by the SFC, or SV, SFC uh, are in line with Hong Kong's efforts to position itself as a hub for digital assets, ETFs. They're going to plan to rep replicate the booming success witness here in the U.S. So if you look at BlackRock, think of this as who's the BlackRock of Hong Kong? We'll show that in a second. Other points, of course, are the rollout of these ETFs is expected to attract new investment to the broader Asian region. The big news here is it's both Bitcoin and Ethereum. So that, I think, is going to set the tone uh, going forward uh, for sure. And the other thing that could be, because there are some sources out there that are claiming we could see about a $25 billion unlock jumping into these. So there could be some significant movement both on Bitcoin and ETF in the coming days. And if you look at Hashkey, which is going to be one of the companies that's going to be involved in this. Now, sure, their spot market contains a lot of tokens in here, but I want you guys to remember one thing. We've done a lot of videos on Hashkey, and there is one token that has always been there. You recognize it. That's right. It's Avalanche. So is it possible? Is it outside the realm of possibility that we could see an Avalanche ETF? Be on the lookout there. You heard it here first. All right, we're going to break into a lot of tokens today. And of course, uh, joining me is going to be our friends over at Investing Bros. You guys know Tim. Coming back into the show. Great to see you, Tim. Good to see you, Paul. Good to be back on here. And, uh, you know, glad that the market. Last time I think I was here, uh, we were still in that zone of like, is it going to be taken off anytime soon? But the yeah. market's up a lot since I was here last. Glad to be back. Yeah, well, you and I uh, shared a moment in time together, and that was uh, the Solana eight dollar low. <laughs> yes, when we were yes. when we were trade and we were doing this right here, and uh, mm -hmm. we were looking at that uh, chart, and it was it was when I kind of credit you for selling me on, hey, Solana's going to come back, and this may be the bottom, and we called it at the time. I think it was January of last year, and uh, yeah. we were doing some trading, and bam, boy, did people uh, enjoy that one. If you guys want to check out Investing Bros. <laughs> Make sure and go over to his uh, YouTube channel right now and subscribe to his channel. He does some great jobs on, of course, a lot of analysis out there. So let's get into the charts quickly, Tim, and let's uh, go over to Bitcoin for a minute and really take a look yeah. at where this could go. What are your thoughts right now of the current position on Bitcoin? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so right now, something to keep an eye on is there is a little bit of a rising. Uh, you could, some people are going to call this a rising channel. Some people are going to call this a rising wedge. We had a little bit of a fake out kind of back here in March. But as a whole, you can see there's a pretty good resistance trend in play, rising resistance and rising support. Um, currently, prices are moving down at the moment. And, you know, I, I've been using Lux Algo now for the last couple of months, been uh, killing it in the trades. Uh, we are still seeing a take profit suggestion above us. But here within the last four hour candle, we just got a sell suggestion and, it, and it's it's moving uh, pretty quickly to the downside. When I, I come mm -hmm. on the hourly chart, I actually put a tweet out about this earlier today. It looks like we really want to get back to some of those lows we were at just uh, two days ago, back on the 10th. Uh, look for a sub 68K to come back into play with our order block, our take profit suggestion. But also when I come here and I look at the four hour chart, 
You know, you're looking at this is a smart show concept. It, it's it's like a moving average. I'm not going to give the full history lesson, but even that one is saying, are we back coming into play at this rising support level around 66,800, uh, turning off some noise from Luxago that takes us back to the red line. And then we're at a decision point. Do we want to break uh, historically, you know, these channels, these rising channels break to the downside? Do we want to break? Do we want to hold support there? Uh, liquidations kind of showing us that's also, again, key level to keep an eye on. We, we could go a lot lower. We have liquidity all the way down to 55K that if the traders really wanted to take out a lot of the bullish stronghold positions, a move back down to 55K could have massive gains for traders. But I'm keeping an eye on the brightest yellow parts right here. There's millions of longs that will be liquidated if we come in here just south of 67,000. Uh, and then you kind of make that decision. Do we want to bounce back up? Do we want to keep coming down and have a little bit of a long squeeze in play? Uh, that's to be decided later on. Uh, I, I was telling, you know, Paul, we were talking a little bit before the show. From a technical standpoint, if I'm just trying to be as unbiased as possible from a chart perspective, there really is probably a, a good reason to think that we should be moving to the downside, uh, especially when I come out here to the weekly chart. Let me turn back on some of these things. We, you know, we, we've kind of gotten overextended here. We've been living in our red support, have not touched our smart show concept in a very long time. I think there's a chance, Paul, that Bitcoin could be about to drop below 65 and maybe flirt with 60K. Uh, come back to the daily chart and turning this stuff off here. This, of course, was the wicks we had back uh, in early March. It would make a lot of sense in the season we're going in right now as we get into the halving event. We've always historically traded sideways either right into the halving or out of the halving. Uh, right. And I think that that's a lot of people want to talk about upward mobility or they want to talk about big moves. I'm sitting here, if I had to be a... a if I were to make a bet, like on a gambling site, and say, Tim, what is the next move for Bitcoin? I'm going to put most of my chips on sideways movement through the halving. Uh, let me show you guys why that is. And I'm going to go to a longer time frame chart, and we're going to look at the last couple of halving events. Uh, we go back here into 2020. We're talking about May 11th back here. Look what happened. You know, Yeah, we had a massive dip due to COVID and we rallied up out of that, but take a look at the weeks leading into the halving. And then right. the next couple, it's not even just weeks, look at the next couple of months, mm -hmm. sideways boring halving. Now, again, this is a special circumstance. We, the economy was thrown off, the, the entire investing place was thrown off due to COVID. So if you don't trust me on that one, that's one example of sideways movement. Let's go to the previous cycle uh, back in July of 2016. We'll take a look here. A couple of weeks before the halving, we have a nice little rally, but then we start to trade sideways into the halving. We then trade side, sideways out of the halving and actually have a 20% correction. I'll talk more about that in, in case we repeat history, what that would look like. And then look at that more sideways action until finally we start to get some real excitement back in November of 16, which was, of course, like four months after the halving event. Uh, you know, So that's two examples. And then you go all the way back to maybe the most uh, explosive having event we're talking about back here in 2012 the first having um yeah we rallied up into the having event and actually went a little bit higher but look at the sideways action we really weren't breaking above the more recent highs of that rally for a couple of weeks after the having event so when i hear people say oh the having is coming here in about you know eight days seven eight days we're gonna explode when that when that 20th date comes i look at the history and i say well it doesn't look like historically that's the right way to call it. Yeah. Well, and if you think about it, you know, when we were chatting earlier, the the influx of uh, the ETFs definitely have a different perspective on how this could play out. Um, mm -hmm. And you look at you look at Grayscale right now. I mean, Grayscale is talking about a lot of outflows. This is uh, Michael. He's talking about the issue with their fee issue, uh, meaning they're the most expensive you know ETF trading out there. He's even concerned, and even him. Is, is saying we're going to kind of hold in a holding pattern until we start to see a little bit more pressure here. But you look at this from a BlackRock standpoint or a Fidelity standpoint or an ARC standpoint, they're gaining in a lot of new investors through these ETFs. And yes. you mentioned this early. And if we start seeing a bleed on Bitcoin, let's say an under 60K Bitcoin, uh, mm -hmm. if that were to happen, especially if people are buying at 68 to 70K right now, um, how do you think this plays in the longer term market? Does this upset the apple cart in terms of 
how the market plays out for Bitcoin, along with altcoins as well. What do you think? Yeah, so I want to make sure people understand. Well, I'm I'm predicting that the having event won't immediately come with bullish price action. It is still fundamentally a very big bullish uh Right. movement for Bitcoin. Ultimately, what's going to happen, and if you talk about the laws of economics, most people know these, uh, supply and demand. If if one of them starts to, if the supply drops and demand stays constant, price goes up. Uh, mm -hmm. But what happens at this time is because there's such perceived bullishness, yes, there's a supply shock that drops, but the demand drops with it as the uh, whales and the experienced traders trade against the perception that bullishness should come, but that can only happen for so long. And right. eventually the suppression gives away, uh, goes away, and then the price action goes back to the upside. So as a whole, I'll, I'll go and share my screen here again. My expectation, I, I don't even think I'm going to say months or a long time period. I give it maybe one month. I think one month of sideways, maybe slightly uh descending price action let's just kind of draw a chart in here maybe you know we kind of bounce in this zone um there's an outside chance i talked to paul before this uh to me kind of worst case scenarios maybe a revisit slightly right there on 50k 48k used to be the golden pocket a significant resistance level and, and we'll trade sideways but then the pressure release and bitcoin will move to the upside i, I think this is i um, don't quote this exact chart perfectly but the concept of sideways for a little bit and then moving to the upside uh, yeah. When it comes to altcoins, uh, there's a chart right now that I think tells a very good story of what is going on. Right now, uh, even today, the only chart that's a major crypto chart that's moving to the upside is the Bitcoin dominance chart. And mm -hmm. something I want people to be aware of is, are we as high as we've been this cycle? No. We've had wicks come up as high as 55.2%. But this is the weekly chart right here where if you're looking at the candle body closes, we were not able to close a weekly candle above 54%. Uh, we had one get right to that level, but then we just kept closing below. We had you know three different wicks go above, but here last week, we finally closed a candle above it. And then today, you know, as if we were to close here in the next couple of days, we're gonna be even higher. Well, what is this communicating? We're not seeing the Bitcoin chart set these higher wicks instead uh, higher candles in fact we have a hanging man candle right here on bitcoin where uh we literally started the week and did nothing but downward action last week that's a pretty bearish candle we clearly are seeing the likes of altcoins you know cardano's down a pretty decent amount you guys can see uh, i have a call potentially for 55 50 percent move to the downside but Cardano's down 30% from where it's been more recently. Solana, actually not down as much as it could be, but Solana clearly is down. Uh, you know, AVAX, uh, I'm big on AVAX. I heard you talk about it earlier, but look at AVAX. It's clearly going to the downside. But this, this chart right here, the Bitcoin dominance chart, is climbing to the upside. And historically, I just want to make sure people understand this. You asked earlier, Paul, what I kind of think is happening I think we might be seeing somewhat of a similar situation to potentially what we saw back in June of 2019. So if you look here on the Bitcoin dominance chart, the Bitcoin dominance had climbed. It was hovering here on 60%. Um, but here, you know, we had a small correction and then Bitcoin dominance takes off from June 19th, uh, sorry, June of 2019. It takes off from about 58% and tops out about 73 early in September, right? So this chart goes up. Well, what was the Bitcoin chart looking like during this time period? This is June. This is September. We end up having a 50% correction, but Bitcoin in the time that the dominance rallied from 58% to 73, Bitcoin fell 40%. Well, right. why then did we see the dominance climb so high? It's because we had the likes of like Ethereum, for example, that topped out here in June of 2019. It from September, you know, from June to September corrected. If I can grab the tool here, correct. There we go. All right. It corrected upwards of, I see right in here, September. You know, 50, 60 percent. I think that we're seeing potentially a similar situation. I'm not going to say that Bitcoin's going to drop 50 and, and Ethereum's going to drop 60. I think there's certain altcoins that can. But I think if uh, if the ETFs cannot keep Bitcoin propped up, potentially, potentially we see Bitcoin do something along the lines of, again, let's just say 60 percent. That's talking about like a nice 18, 20 percent. You know, we could come down here to 55. I showed you guys earlier on liquidations, 55 uh, could be in play. That's about 25 percent. And then worst case scenario, 48. We're talking about 35 percent. All right. Well, what does that mean for the likes of Ethereum and Cardano and Solana? That would mean, Paul, that those probably are falling more like 40 percent. 
50%. Yeah. And, and people don't like that. People don't like to hear that. But I just showed you on like Ethereum, for example. Take a look at Cardano. Let's go back to the last bull market. Uh, again, bottom of the bear market hit. I don't really count COVID. COVID was such a, a weird outlier. Look at some of the pullbacks on Cardano, for example, before they really took off. 70% pullback right there. Then here is the bull market after uh, COVID started to take off. Cardano had itself a nice little, oh, would you look at that, 50% pullback. Again, we wouldn't look at that and say, oh, Cardano, so bearish. That's such a terrible chart. That's clearly higher highs and higher lows. And yet, during a bull market, that altcoin pulled back majorly. This is just what altcoins do. So I I've been telling my audience now for a couple of weeks, Paul, that I, I think that they should not be surprised to see altcoins, certain altcoins, have 40, 50, even some of them 60 to 70% pullbacks. And that's actually very normal after a lot of these coins are up, you know, a thousand percent from their bottoms. Right. This is just what happens when markets run overextended based off of a lot of hype, which we have had. Corrections come into play. They're very healthy. They bring true value to those price action. And then, then it gets better moves to the upside longer term. Yeah, I look at, okay, so I'm kind of in agreement that the one caveat to this is that we're getting ready to open up another ETF that is not a Canadian ETF. We're talking about a really yeah. centralized market for crypto being uh, Hong Kong and Asia, because that'll that'll bring in a lot of the Asian countries. Uh, so, and just on the spur of what's happened with the ETFs here, obviously in the US and Wall Street, I guess the question is really, wh what will that impact have? Because the timing here is very unique with the halving. It also could be a really good strategic time for some of the Asian markets, because we could see that pullback, which would be a great entry point you know, for some of these investors, if we do see a pullback, whether it's on Ethereum, because that's going to be an ETF over there and uh, Bitcoin over there. So this is the one area that I'm still watching, because I think before mm -hmm. we see that sideways action, I'm really watching Hong Kong, because that obviously is going to have some impact. If it, if it ends up being a dud, then okay, so be it. We'll see what happens uh, through the halving from the concept of where BlackRock and you know the nine ETFs are rolling here in the US. The other tokens that we're watching that are starting to get some impact has been mostly from a regulatory standpoint. Uniswap is one of them. Uniswap, of course, received their enforcement notice. This is a Wells notice. Very unusual that a decentralized DeFi platform like Uniswap uh, is now being uh, targeted by the SEC. Their CEO saying, hey, don't worry about this. We're going to continue to fight. How does the chart look like uh, yeah. for Uniswap? Because that took a really tough candle over the last few days. What are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, let's let's take a look over there. This is, an, I mean, probably the one of the biggest narrative reasons is why crypto is falling. Is it's the all-out war that Gary Gensler is continuing to have on the crypto space, and he's, you know, the truth is he's he's quietly losing every. Uh, sure. lawsuit he's going after but he knows his power he knows what he can do to markets temporarily like he is the one man manipulator of price action but he is fine with it uh uniswap right now down over 50 percent from that high that we had just a couple of weeks ago or in early march uh and and there's gonna be signs here let's pull up luxalgo and see where support is looking like you know we're, we've hit the first layer of the suggested take profit on a short it's crazy you know uniswap of course is getting the really bad bad news based off of uh this you know they're getting the really bad price action based off the news but Lux Agua actually said you should have shorted this way back in March yeah. uh, when the price was up here at 13 above $13, pushing $14. Look where the take profit is, and we're just now hitting it. We also have the green wave of support coming in that could potentially be a, a, a short-term stop the bleed for a little bit. Uh, what I'm watching, though, if I'm going to be honest with you, because that news is fresh and because it is going to hit the market heavily, and it's like the news hit at the same time that, again, these markets really should have corrected – Keep an eye on some order blocks down here. I, I don't want to see this happen, but we got some pretty fat order blocks on Uniswap down at 6% and then a really juicy one down at 5 That would be pretty deadly for the, the price action. I mean, pretty deadly. I say that's a 70% pullback. But honestly, mm. again, it, it, it is doable. And the, the, gold, or the, the silver lining of that dark cloud I would give you guys if we were to fall back down to $5 is that technically speaking, that's not a lower low. So this is not the prettiest bull market we've ever seen. But as long as we stay back above this 385, 
That's not the end of the world for Uniswap. I think Uniswap is going to win their lawsuit just like everybody else who the SEC sues has won against them. But the the ugliness that's coming into play right here is going to be interesting. Uh, I told you guys we're getting close to support even without Luxalgo. This was a level I, I, I talked about earlier on Bitcoin. The 48K was an untapped resistance level. I at least said that to you, Paul, before we were live. I don't know if I said it here. There is something about this seven ninety, you know, eight dollar area that look at how much resistance happened. Right. Um. And and then after we blow through it, I, I was telling Paul before we went live uh, with this review uh, recording, I said it, it's not uncommon for levels that have been significant levels of resistance if they get blasted through like we did on this. That's one daily candle. One day back here on February mm -hmm. uh, 23rd, we blasted that level and have not come anywhere back to it. I'll actually make an argument that this pullback back down towards $8 is a very healthy correction from a chart perspective. Like if, if I didn't know about the bad news for Uniswap, I might look at this chart and just say, yeah, this makes sense that we're pulling back down to $8. Yeah. Look at how many times since back in November of 2022, we rejected in this area and then we blast through it like it's wet toilet paper. We need to revisit that and turn it into support. So this is actually an argument can be made that this is a very strong bullish pullback for the longevity of the Uniswap chart. Yeah, I look at it this way, to your point, is that the SEC has uh, kind of went in on a lot of these early projects like that, much like they did with Dapper, you know, so Dapper Labs, they got rocked by the SEC's investigation. Mm -hmm. This was in 2023. And then guess what? They, of course, now have dropped the in investigation abruptly. So basically what they've said is nothing to see here. And now Dapper mm -hmm. Labs, obviously that being Flow, the token that is related to that, uh, also had some adjustments because of those kind of scenarios. So this could be the same case with Uniswap, I would agree, is just seeing uh, seeing how this plays out. There's just so much from a regulatory standpoint that affects a lot of these projects, even though for the most part, uh, these trade outside the United States. Speaking of flow, I want to take a look at your flow chart and tell me yeah. where you think this token is heading. Yeah, so I, I will be honest, I don't do a lot of flow TA, but I'm going to give it a, a shot here and tell you guys what I'm seeing. Um, let's let's start off before I even use any of my Lux Algo tools. I love using them, but let's do look at some traditional TA um, here on Coinbase. Let's just even see from back here in July, a high we had back in Ju uh, July, August of 2022. Let's see what yeah. fixed range volume is looking like. Let's see where the heavy volume is going to come into play. It's not low. There we go. All right. Well, we're kind of approaching back towards our point of control. So that's a positive sign we're looking at right there. Um, if we were to look at Fibonacci, we can do a more macro Fibonacci and say that, you know, there is some interest in the uh, the golden pockets been used before. So a, ma a massive pullback back to 66 cents could be interesting. But then let's go more micro and say, all right, look at this. Our, our point of control, not that far away from a golden yeah. pocket pullback. We're looking at, again, former resistance right in this area around $1. Um, so even before I use Luxalgo, or sorry, yeah, before I use Luxalgo, uh, we're seeing some confluence in here is talking about that dollar range could be an interesting target to keep your eye on. Uh, we, you know, we're pretty much right there. Yeah, we're pretty much there already. We're at dollar seven cents, so not that far away from it. Um, but that that has a lot of confluence so far. Let's now go ahead and pull up Luxalgo, see what it is saying. Uh, yeah, okay, we're going to find some confluence in here. Take profit suggestions coming in at this level, uh, right there towards $1. four. We do have a pretty decent little order block along with the green support cloud on the daily chart coming in down towards $0.88. Cents. So if we do drop below a dollar, if those can't hold, I think that's going to be an interesting thing to keep your eye on. Our oscillators, let's see what they're kind of saying to us. Let me pull up some of my other uh, ones here as well. Uh, MACD's not, okay, here we go. We're, this is a sign that potentially the 88 cents could be coming into play. I, I don't like what I'm seeing here on the oscillators where the money flow just keeps flowing out. Like yeah, every time we down. bounce back in, that money flow gets lower highs. The MACD after flirting with a bullish cross is now moving bearish again. And then after hovering and hesitating around 50 on the RSI, we're making a pretty confident move to the downside right there. Uh, so the oscillators not telling a pretty story. I, I, I'm, even though we had that confluence here on the dollar, I'm not saying that to just abandon this because it is somewhat of support, but I'm seeing more things stack up that this 88 cent region could be uh, a, a healthy place to find a bounce there. Uh, currently we're down, you know, what is it? About 36%, but guess what that level kind of brings us to? That's closer to that 50. I, I told you guys, it's not weird or crazy for a lot of these altcoins 
to fall back 50, even sometimes 60%. Um, but I like that zone probably better than all of the rest of them when I'm looking at the daily chart and seeing what Luxalgo is kind of giving me for some support levels. Yeah, well, that's the good point. I think that when you do see these kind of adjustments like this, especially around some of these news items, which, you know, in a in a traditional run of a bull market, because we are in kind of a sideways situation right now, whether you look at Bitcoin mm -hmm. or Ethereum. Now, you, of course, you got a lot of situations, I think, that have contributed to this coming in from Solana. Their congestion over the past couple of weeks, this came out from Phantom today. Good news, Phantom's transaction success rates have now significantly improved. Past 24 metrics show the transactions have now been landing at 90%, which is good 5x improvement from a week ago. So they seem to have fixed the problem. On the Solana blockchain, at least for the swap transactions, we hadn't seen too much in way of network slowdown in terms of just moving Solana from you know um, mm -hmm. destination to destination, but the swaps were definitely causing some problems. When you look at Solana as a token right now, it skyrocketed up to 200. It's, it's adjusted a little bit off of that, has had a little bit of downtrend. Our sentiment data coming over from our market sentiment data has been still very bearish, pushing Solana down. What does your chart show for Solana right now? Yeah. Yeah, so Solana, uh, one of the coins that has definitely made my portfolio look very, very good this early into a bull market. Uh, it, it's a coin that, let's just start from a fundamental standpoint. When, when I was on your show a yep. long time ago and we talked about the $8 bottom, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm proud of that call, you know, did a good job with it. I did not, if, if you said, Tim, He's is your bingo card, does it, <laughs> does it include a block to 200 before the halving? I would have said, Paul, you're, you're nuts. Uh, and that's just what happened. But I, I want to make sure people understand this. Altcoins do not have any business making runs like this right now. I, I want to, but when I'm showing you what happens on Solana, I want to make sure I reference a chart that did this last bull market and reference what we kind of saw happen. Yeah. Cardano had really no business, as much as I liked the project, had no business shooting up over $2. A lot of hype. Uh, then it went to three dollars, went even crazy, but but it had a very fast pullback both times. Um, I, I think that Solana, I love that we got over two hundred. Uh, I've given a price prediction for the top of the bull market on my channel, Investing Bros. That I thought Solana. I, I think I made this prediction back when we were yeah somewhere closer to November, December. Back when we were around sixty bucks, I said a thousand dollars to fifteen hundred dollars could happen for Solana. Cool. Well, okay. that's that's a great, that's some great money. I think Solana is going to be a top four, maybe even top three coin by the time this is all said and done. Still. But if we up here at $200, we we're only a 5X away from some of those yeah. price predictions. This coin was just massively overbought. So uh, this is one of the ones I say when you when you have these big, big uh, rallies for the health of the coin, you need to have big corrections. So there's a couple of things here from a technical standpoint. A, we were in a symmetrical triangle pattern that you when you break bearish like we just did here uh, today, um, this is the breakout prediction. You're going to look for about 130. Uh, that right there alone would bring Solana from its high uh, down about 36%. I don't know if that's good enough. Uh, when we're mm -hmm. talking about the massive gains, 36%, that's not that big of a deal. I, I put on my channel that I think it's realistic to expect somewhere around 124 to 118. I think that zone that I have right in here, to me, is the beginning of a healthy correction for Solana. I'm not saying Solana is going to die. I'm not saying I don't think Solana is a good coin. I'm saying it is an overpriced coin. There is even reason to believe this coin could see more of like a 50% pullback. And of course, it's not hard to do the math. If you got up above, you know, 200, we're looking around back towards that $100 level. That's still in the card. And, and the mm. truth is, you know, people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear, oh, we're going to drop back 50%. But let's just zoom out. Take a look at that chart. Imagine that that price does that. That's not a bearish looking chart. I'll grab my uh, arrows again. This is not a bad looking chart. Everyone will look back on this in the in the history of the bull market and say, oh, look at the explosive price action of Solana. They won't even give any light to that 50% pullback. But that's part of the reason why I think it really should and could happen. Let's let's see what Lux Algo is saying here. Um, they are still flashing uh, take profit suggestions. But just today here on the daily chart, we did get that number three sell suggestion. We're using our smart trail concept as support. But again, take a look at where the big order blocks and our green band of support is coming in here on the daily, it's coming in down note at $100. So yeah, uh, I'm the type of person, I don't think I'm gonna wait for that. I think I'm gonna add to my bag closer to this 120 mark. But 
it's hard to argue that a move to 100 would not be healthy Could be for Solana. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think, you know, because we get that a lot, you know, whether it's in the channel or in the Q&A, uh, where, you know, where these entry points are on some of these hot coins. Because, you know, many people were looking at entries down under 100 that they thought at mm -hmm. that time were too high. You know, and obviously now mm -hmm. we've seen, you know, the kind of performance we have. And that was late party goers, you know, to the Solana. Uh, train. So there's been a, a lot of action in that point. I, I still am in agreement with you is that we have yet to see these uh, f price fluctuations, which are typical, but I'm still yeah. looking at the scenario that plays in this from the ETF side is we just don't know what kind of impact these ETFs are going to play and obviously BlackRock playing into this because now we've got a whole new strategy uh, coming in from you know traditional investors that whether they're crypto investors yeah. or not, they're in a BlackRock ETF or a you know, uh, a Fidelity ETF. Any other tokens uh, before we let you go that you're looking at that you're saying, hey, maybe this is another play? Yeah. Uh, what I want to say before I uh, move on to that is the new ETFs coming out are going to be very interesting. But with this recent inflation data we've gotten, Paul, yep. uh, narratives have changed. You know, a lot of people are pricing in, you know, some of the reason we had these the big rallies was people are pricing in a lot of rate cuts. We're mm -hmm. finding out, guys, we're going to be lucky if we get probably one or two by the time this yep. is all said and done this year in 2024. That's going to bring some stuff back. I, I want to reference this, though, as to why Bitcoin could still trade sideways while the alts drop. Remember what Larry Fink has recently called Bitcoin, a flight to quality. Yep. Uh, so as we get these new ETF news, I I'm going to be interested what the markets consider quality. What do they see as flight to quality? When you have mm -hmm. economic concern, you're less likely to go into the risky assets, which altcoins are still seen as, but Bitcoin is being reclassified. We're, we used to call it risk yep. on. I think based off the words of Larry Fink, Bitcoin, and it's I think you can off. make the argument for Ethereum as well, they're actually flights to quality. That's where you should go to get away from the economic woes. So I, there's actually a scenario, I'm not going to be surprised if for the next couple of months, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum actually hold up pretty well. Yeah. But altcoins, again, have these dips. Uh, but uh, let's talk about two altcoins that I am I'm big on uh, more recently. I, I did uh, call this in my community here just a couple of days ago. I think Chainlink has a little bit moved to the downside. But you want to talk about one of the coins that could get put into that category of flight to quality. I think Chainlink is, is one people should keep an eye on. I, I've got a, yep. uh, a bold statement I've made that I believe Chainlink, which is currently ranked number 16 in coin market cap, could finish the bull market in the top five, if not top three coins. I think there's Ooh. an outside chance, and I'm, I'm going to say outside chance. I feel pretty confident about a $200, $300 billion market cap, but I will not be surprised if Chainlink pushes closer to $600 to $700 billion market cap. I don't have enough time in this video to explain that, but that's the hot take I've made here recently. Where would that put the yeah. price? Where would they it would put it up at? like seven, six to seven hundred dollars per coin, and we're, we're currently oh trading God. at sixteen dollars per coin. Yeah, sixteen bucks. Yes, but, yeah, so this could be but an I, eight dollar Solana trade. I, I tell people the, when <laughs> people doubt me about Chainlink, I say, imagine you could go back and invest in the internet when it was first being created. Yeah, bingo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That is what Chainlink is going to be like. But what I'm seeing here, you know, we defended seventeen dollars so well. Uh, for a couple of months now. But as we've lost it today, I've told my audience, take a look where our take profit suggestion is here, along with a fat order block. We're coming in down just south of $14. That's another nice, strong level of support. Chainlink is one of these coins that has been so good to traders if they know how to read charts because it's been very clean. I mean, look at, look at this yep. trading zone for years. Yep. And then we break oh. above it and we create a new zone and we break above it and we create a new zone. Uh, Chainlink has followed technical analysis rules so well. So from a chart perspective, I love it. Uh, but even from the fundamentals perspective, I love it. Another one I'm big on right now, and it's, it's dropping here. And I'm, I've told my audience, keep an eye on a pullback ICP. here for ICP, uh, at least back down to $11. ICP is one I think is another one that, uh, is it going to have the same gains that I'm predicting for Chainlink? Maybe not. But I think ICP is another big player that could make people a lot of money. I, I still think there's more than a 20x left in the market for it. Uh, from current prices. So those are two. I have a lot of coins. I, I, I have probably have 30 in my portfolio. But if you were going to ask me, Tim, what are two coins more recently you've been mm -hmm. very, very bullish on long term? ICP and Chainlink, it's hard to argue uh, against those two. Stacks is another one. I love what I'm going to see in Stacks with yep. uh, being the number one Bitcoin layer two. But 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> I could I could go on a lot of court. I like yeah, a lot we, of court. Yeah, we but. definitely. Well, we're, <laughs> listen for everybody that's watching right now. We're going to try to get Tim uh, back in on the Fridays for our weekend outlooks and some of our trading signals. So uh, definitely having uh, you on is is good to to have you back in the fold. Hey, Tim, it's always fun. Again, if you guys have not yes. uh, checked out uh, Investing Bros, make sure and go visit Investing Bros over on YouTube and catch Tim's channel and subscribe over there. Tim, it was good seeing you, my man. Take care. Absolutely. Thank you, Paul. You bet. All right, you guys are tied in maybe on the podcast side of things. You just I'm, Surely you're not. Hopefully you're here on YouTube by now because there's a lot of charts you have to look at. So make sure and jump over here. Hit subscribe and like on a couple of videos. We'll get into your algorithm and boom, you'll get all kinds of of news, updates, Web3, gaming, and of course, some of these kinds of analysis where we break down a lot of charts for you right here on the channel. Of course, follow me out there on X, App Hall Baron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.